Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new F124 tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to become instantly faster while using a racing wheel on F124. This will apply generally for pretty much every sim racing title out there as well. So it will go across the board, but today specifically focusing on F124. So this will work for pretty much every brand, every steering wheel. I'm going to be teaching you about the intricate details of force feedback and what's happening and why stuff is doing other stuff basically so we're going to be jumping first thing in today with your steering wheel uh with your steering wheel feel and also your force feedback calibration so the first thing i'm going to be talking about is the calibration as you can see i have everything to zero uh especially the steering rate is set to zero and this is to keep my inputs from real life to in game one to one so for example if we bring up this little setting here you can see at the moment i turn the wheel to 50 uh degree uh, in, in the game uh, and I want it to be matching the steering wheel input that I'm doing in real life so I like to keep everything one to one and not having a filter on top of anything like that so we're going to quickly do an example with here with the throttle linearity setting so I'm going to put the throttle to let's go 50% here and this will mean I'm at 50% on my throttle travel and by the time I add photo linearity, what basically makes us the first half of the input less sensitive and the second half of the input more sensitive, um, basically to make the first half of the pedal longer and the second half of the pedal shorter. When I put this up to 50% in the photo linearity, you can see that it's going to completely change my input by almost 20%, going from 50% to 30% in the game. And this completely changes the feel and what I'm looking for in terms of my one-to-one -one tuition, what's happening inside my brain, my rotaries in my body, and how I'm translating what I want my feet, my hands, and my eyes to do in terms of an input going towards the game. So I like to have everything set to zero. The only exception I would kind of say to this is having, let's say, a throttle or a brake dead zone to make sure that you're not holding the throttle down the straight or the brake down the straight in an unnecessary manner. With that being said, everything to zero, and now we're going to be quickly talking about the in-game settings, so like the 65% on the force feedback, and again, everything set to zero after that, because everything after the force feedback strength is purely a distraction from what's actually happening, and is an amplified effect. For example, the game will still tell me that I'm going over a curb, but zero is the true value that I should be feeling, and anything that I'm putting above zero will be an amplified signal and will be over exaggerating what it actually should be doing. For example, if I drive over a curb with zero, it's going to tell me that I'm driving over a curb, but if I go to 10, it's going to be plus 10 on terms of the uh, amplifying of the signal effect, so it's going to be larger than a a different signal or a different feeling on the track what i do not want i want the car to be as pure i want the feeling to be as pure as possible so i can feel all the little intuitions and little details of oversteer understeer and what's happening around the track and this is why my on track effect my rumble strip effect my off track effect my pit stop effect my wheel damper is all set to zero F124 is quite unique in terms of its wheel rotation settings, to be honest. Um, it's very, very, very sensitive on the turning, especially. So having somewhere around 360 for me is the ideal balance between speed, comfort, confidence and the ability to be saving the tire during the qualifying and the racing laps as well as if you put too much tire scrub on this year's game then you ultimately end up wearing the car out unnecessarily uh the final thing that i'm going to talk about actually on this is going to be force feedback clipping and basically force feedback clipping is when the strength of the in-game force feedback system goes over what it can actually deliver in terms of details and then becomes a numb stiffness that you can't actually feel intuition and little beat details or bumps tracks and oversteer understeer from and the way that i think and the way that i describe having uh force feedback uh, clipping um basically if you have a speaker inside of your car for the musical force um if you turn the speaker up to its maximum volume everything is going to be super super loud everything's going to be vibrating but you're not going to hear the words of the music if you turn it down super 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 low then ultimately you're going to have the full ability to hear the words but it will be like a whisper and you have to really pay attention to the small words to be able to hear anything the ideal balance is around 65 percent in this year's game from my opinion 
um, to stop the forcey back clipping because forcey back, like I say, is best when it's in its middle working range, when it's not too loud and it's not too quiet, and that's when you get the amazing feeling and the amazing detail from the steering wheel as well. So with that being said, that is the let's say basic settings covered in terms of the steering wheel, and now I'm going to go on track and tell you what you're looking for in terms of the feeling of the steering wheel and how you can be growing and getting faster because of this. So. In a basic summary, when the wheel goes heavier on a full back racing wheel, especially direct drive like I have right now, I have a Fanatec DB1 uh, direct drive system in my hands today, and basically when the wheel will go heavier, that means that you're getting understeer and the front tyres are loading up with grip. When the wheel starts to go lighter, it either means that you have quite significant understeer, like right now my wheel is going lighter, or it's telling you that you have oversteer. So it's something that I really recommend for you to do to grow yourself, to understand, get a good feeling with the car, is to sort of weed down the straight and you can start to feel, even if you try this at home, you can start to feel the weight of the wheel pick up its heaviness and getting heavier and heavier and heavier when you're turning the car and that is to signify how much weight is being put into the front tyres and thus grip and the more grip that you have, the heavier the wheel will become. So effectively, what you're looking to do within your forcey back and direct drive systems is, when turning, try to make the wheel as heavy as possible inside of your mind and the feeling that you're having within the wheel, and then that can signify to you where there is more grip. Effectively, the heavier you can make the wheel going round the corner while driving lap to lap, corner to corner, means the more and more grip that you can generate compared to the previous lap. So this is how I can understand if I've done a really good corner or if I'm not quite on the limit right now. So I use a combination of my eyes to see if the car is moving around, if the front tyres are sliding or not, if I've met my apex, if I'm doing a good minimum speed throughout the corner. But I also keep in the back of my mind in the subconscious nature if the wheel is feeling heavier than it did on the previous lap or the previous corner, I know that I'm getting better and better and more and more grip. This is extremely prominent and extremely useful in changeable conditions such as going from dry to wet or wet to dry. If you're going from the, the dry to wet conditions, you can actually feel the wheel getting lighter and lighter and lighter while you're on the slick tyres driving around on a wet and wet track. Try it at home. Go out on track with a wet go out on track while the track is wet is damp with dry slick tires you will not have any wheel weight and the wheel will feel extremely light compared to the dry conditions the reason for this is is like i said you have less grip so there's less weight and less force being put into the steering wheel and this can help you understand and build up an idea and a mental picture for where the grip is and where the grip isn't within the racing game like I say, to finish off the point and to summarise my point here, you can utilise this massively while driving around the track in time trial, online mode, against your friend, AI, whatever you're doing. But if you can feel that the wheel is getting heavier and heavier and heavier throughout the sequence of corners, that is a normally a very good indication that you're getting more and more grip and you can push the car harder and harder. In the wet condition, when you're stop boxing from the wet tyre to the dry tyre in a race, you can really utilise this and you'll feel over the space of a few laps from coming out of the pit lane, putting on the dry tyres and then doing one, two laps later, you'll feel the wheel getting heavier and heavier corner by corner as the track surface dries and the friction from the tyres to the surface of the road gets higher and higher. What you want to be looking for for the oversteer of the car is when the wheel is actually going to go light. For example, I'm going to let go of the wheel right now, create some oversteer, and you're going to see in-game actually the wheel will start turning itself and start counter-steering by itself. So I'm just going to sort of let go, and you can see the wheel of course jumps around quite a lot because it's a powerful 4 c back system and a direct drive, but you can see it actually starts to counter-steer for me. So you can see it's moving around by itself and this is an exercise that you can do when at home is you can start doing these little half spins that getting oversteer for example you can see me just tapping the throttle throughout the corner getting the car to slide on the rear and it, the wheel will literally pull you to tell you what way you need to correct the car a little secret for you at home as well is so when you're going to feel that you're getting oversteer you can actually relax your hands and the wheel will start to tell you where it wants to go to correct the car. 
This is the secret that I've been using all along in my career to try and get those really critical oversteer saves. If you're holding the wheel so, 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 so tight and you're really gripping the wheel, I'll try it right now. Like, I can't really feel what's going to happen with the car. Like, it's just a bit cumbersome. It's a bit lazy. It's not, it's not reacting to me. Whereas if I hold the wheel with a loose grip, enough that the wheel does not slide out of my hands, but enough that I have control over the wheel, then I'm able to guide the wheel throughout the corner and the, the full seat back will naturally fix the corrections on track for me and guide me around. This is a secret, like I say, I've been using all along in my career and something that I think can really help you as well. So I think not a lot of people when driving home trust their full seat back system enough to let it do its thing, to be honest. Because the full seat back and the companies are so incredibly smart that they have amazing technologies to help you and to help guide the car around the track but you have to trust it so one more intuition here one more example you can see as i get the oversteer the wheel will point to the right and it's really trying to guide me where to go so in key point summary when i get oversteer the wheel will go lighter and will point towards the direction on what way i want to be saving the car for example if i need to start turning left to save the car from spinning to the right then it will point to the left you can see it's doing it right now for me so this is something that you should really keep in mind it doesn't matter if you're on a five newton meter wheel 20 25 30 newton meter wheel it will all have the same little intuition and detail in the wheel for you to help or to be helped i should say and this is a really really powerful thing that you can use to your disposal when you're going around the corner the more and more the front tires build up grip the heavier and heavier the wheel will become providing that you're not getting forcey back slipping and this could be a fantastic way to see and feel and understand when you're getting more or less grip comparing to the lap before and if you're starting to put too much steering lock in the front tires they will lose traction and lose the friction of the tire and ultimately make the wheel go a little bit lighter as well so if you're going through a corner and you start feeling the, the, the wheel go a little bit lighter as you're going through the corner, it will be one or two things. You'll either be having oversteer or quite significant understeer. You have to use your eyes at this point in time to look at the screen, make your best judgment to understand if you're going to be getting understeer or oversteer in that situation. For example, I'm going to put a lot of steering lock into the car here. And you can see right now, with the car understeering and going into replay camera, the wheel was going slightly lighter in my hands. So I was using my best judgment while watching the screen and understanding what's happened to assume that there's going to be understeer rather than oversteer. So you can see I'm inducing so much understeer to the car that I made the assumption inside of my brain that there was going to be understeer and not oversteer. Again, this is such a really critical part of sim racing that's so easy to misunderstand because the wheel can only do so many things. So, like I say, key point summaries are, and take your notes at home, keep on learning, um, Basically, when the wheel is going heavier and heavier and heavier, that's signifying to you that you're getting more and more and more grip and you can push the car more and more into the corner and carry more speed. If the wheel starts going lighter and lighter and lighter, that is to signify the fact that you're either going to get a loss of front friction, what will be causing front understeer from the car, or you're going to be losing rear friction from the car and that's going to be causing oversteer. Either one is not good, but at that point you have to be watching the screen and making a subconscious decision and a subconscious motion inside of your brain that either you think it's more likely to be understeer or it's more likely to be oversteer. And then from that point onward, you can make the appropriate steering wheel corrections or the pedal corrections to fix what's happening. So... With that being said, I really hope that this video has been a good insight for you and a good, uh, let's say, ability to understand what's happening inside of my brain and how ultimately I go about my racing and the little nuanced details about what can also be helping you. So that being said, thank you so much for watching. Lati Vazati. We're going to try and do this video on a 360. No, we didn't. Unlucky. Thank you so much for watching. I've been Brendan Lee and I'll catch you in the next video. Grazie, Vazazi. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye.